Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you the injury to the superior gluteal nerve and the Trendelenburg test, which is positive in case of this injury. So basically, in the gluteal region, we have got three big muscles, the gluteus maximus, the gluteus medius, and the gluteus minimus. The gluteus maximus muscle is innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve, whereas the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus muscles are innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. So in this model, we have made just two muscles, which are the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus, both of which are innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. So you see, this is the gluteus medius muscle and this is the gluteus minimus muscle. Both of these muscles originate from the external surface of the iliac bone. The gluteus medius from the area between the superior and the anterior gluteal line, whereas the gluteus minimus from the area between the anterior and inferior gluteal lines. Both of them insert onto the greater trochanter of the femur, the gluteus medius on its lateral surface and the gluteus minimus on the anterior surface of the greater trochanter of the femur. Now regarding the action of these muscles, these muscles help in stabilizing the pelvis. They are commonly known as the abductors of thigh, that is they perform this movement which is the abduction. In abduction, basically the angle between the axis of the thigh and the axis of the trunk is decreased. So let me show it to you. So this is the axis of the thigh and the axis of the trunk we will draw it perpendicular to the level of the pelvis. So this is the level of the pelvis and this is the axis of the trunk. So let's move it here. So this is the angle between the axis of the thigh and the axis of the trunk. So when these abductors contract, they will pull the leg outwards, that is the abduction of the thigh. So this will lead to a decrease in the angle between the axis of the thigh and the axis of the trunk. Now again if these muscles contract, but this time the leg is fixed, the person does not want to move the leg and the leg is on the ground. So this time when these muscles contract, now they will tilt the pelvis towards themselves, thus pulling the pelvis of the same side downwards and the opposite side upwards, thus clearing the opposite foot off the ground, especially during walking. So this time again the action is the same, that is they decrease the angle between the axis of the thigh and the axis of the trunk, but the result is different. So when the muscles of both sides are functioning, they play an important role in stabilizing the pelvis, keeping it leveled. Now let's discuss injury to the superior gluteal nerve. So the superior gluteal nerve it passes through the main bulk of the gluteal muscles. So if an intramuscular injection is given in the main bulk of the muscles, then there is a chance of injury to this nerve. And if the nerves get injured, then the muscles innervated by it are paralyzed and lose their action. So right now the muscles of both sides are working and you see that the level of the pelvis is normal, it is horizontal. Now we will see what will happen if muscles of any one of both sides lose their action. So let's do injury to the left side and see what happens. So I am going to unbuckle the muscles of the left side from their insertion. This unbuckling will depict the nerve injury. So you see these muscles cannot perform their action now. So after unbuckling, you see there is a slight tilt in the level of the pelvis. This tilt basically reflects the action of these muscles which are working. That is, they are pulling the pelvis of the same side slightly downwards and thus pulling the pelvis of the opposite side upwards. This tilt is very minimal as you can see and it is even less significant in actual human beings because of the upper body weight which is on the pelvis. So the upper body weight pushes the pelvis downwards and the pelvis is supported from downwards by their feet. Therefore, even if there is a nerve injury on one side, as long as the person is standing, the level of the pelvis almost remains normal. So now we will see what happens if the person lifts one of the foot off the ground, especially during walking. So first of all, let's see what will happen if the person lifts this foot off the ground which is the site of the nerve injury. So you see when the patient has lifted this foot off the ground, which is the site of the nerve injury, the level of the pelvis again remains normal because the muscles of opposite side are holding it and are not letting it drop.
Now let's see what happens when the patient lifts the foot opposite to the site of injury off the ground. So let's do it. So you see when the person has lifted this foot off the ground, there is a significant drop in the level of the pelvis. This is because that muscles of opposite side are not working and they are not holding the pelvis up. So this drop in the level of the pelvis on lifting the foot off the ground is called the positive Trendelenburg test. So basically when we perform the Trendelenburg test in patients, we do not know that muscle injury is on which side. So for example, if the person lifts left foot off the ground and his, left, and his pelvis drops, it means that the muscles of right side are injured or the nerve of right side is injured. Now this drop in pelvis is causing another thing that it is causing functional limb lengthening. The bones are of the same side but due to the drop in the level of the pelvis, this limb has become longer than that limb. So the patient has difficulty in clearing it off the ground during walking. Thus, he adapts to different compensatory mechanisms to clear it off the ground. One of which is that the patient either moves the foot in a semicircular position to bring it forward to clear it off the ground instead of just straight forward. So this mechanism, this type of gait is called swing out gait. Another mechanism is that pers person takes a step higher than usual to bring the foot forward. This gait is called steppage gait. And the third mechanism is that the person pulls his upper body or bends his upper body away from the drop side to pull the pelvis up. So this type of gait is called the gluteal gait. So this is it. I hope you understood it. Thank you for watching.